Okay, morning everyone. We're up ridiculously early again and we're just off flying. But I just wanted to say that I wanted to, uh, to just let everybody know how hard we work as content creators for YouTube. Right then, Cheryl, you ready? Yeah. You got everything? Dunno. Okay. Where's the wings? Just by the side of you there. Hang on. Oh, God. Okay, right. You're going to load the car then? Okay. Ta -da. Well done. Okay, thank you. Okay, morning everyone. As I said in the intro, we're out early. And no, I don't make Cheryl carry everything. Just a little bit of humour to start the video. And what I've been doing lately is working through my hangar of planes that I haven't flown for a long time. So tune in today to see what I fly. Roll the intro. Yes, morning everyone. Working through my hangar, planes that I haven't flown for, for a long time. And the first one today is the AXN Clouds Fly Floater Jet. And I can't quite believe when I looked into the last time I flew this plane, unbelievably, it was over four years ago. So it's like a remaiden really, because I can't remember much about it. I knew where the center of gravity was. I knew what batteries it run on. But I've had to put, um, you know, just sort of like check it over and make sure the receiver was working correctly and put it onto my my DX8 as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to expect really. I can't. I've flown so many planes in four years that I've got no idea. But there you go. Let's get it going. Okay then, so here you go. <laughs> As I said, I just don't know what to expect, so... Sounds like a hive of angry wasps. So yeah, four years, it's a long time. But what I remember about this was that uh, when you switch the power off, it glides really nicely. Runs on the 3S2200. And, um, you know, lasts for a long time on a battery. It's quite blustery up there today, so uh, you can see that uh, the plane is just getting uh, knocked around. But this is just on a four channel spectrum receiver, no gyro or anything like that. It's got a, um, quite a powerful motor actually, I can't remember what KV it is, and it runs on. Um, I think it's a six by four prop. I mean, I bought it as a kit. So I bought um, a 30 amp Hobby King speed controller and 
nine, uh, four nine gram digital servos, Hobby King, and you know, everything else then, the motor and the prop came with the kit. It does fly quite quickly, as you can see. It's quite noisy as well because this is the, obviously the pusher configuration. And what I really loved about this plane was as I was getting through, I started off with a three channel trainer and then I started delving into the world of four channel. I realized that um, the grass over here was always going to be an issue. So because this was obviously hand launch and belly lander, it allowed me to fly when other planes with undercarriage and wheels just wouldn't take off. So uh, it was invaluable really for me as somebody learning the art of fixed wing to be able to you know come over when the grass was long and muddy and clumpy and still be able to fly so uh, you know I got fond memories of just throwing this one into the back of the car thinking oh it's gonna have to be the floater jet today because the grass like is a foot long over here so You know, it does uh, flow quite nicely, as the name suggests. So we're on a bit of a glide there. So oh, yeah, I was always impressed with uh, the pace of this thing, the half shift on a 3S. So very, very nice memories of flying this. Now I set the timer for six minutes, but uh, I used to be able to get quite a bit longer out of it than six minutes. But uh, because I'm going to post uh, two, two flights on this one video, I'm just going to stick to uh, the allotted time. Okay then, let's get it in for the landing then. Very, very floaty, as the name suggests. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the problem I'm finding with this business of revisiting planes that I've flown years ago is that obviously it just feels like a new plane to me again. Um, and I remember with this one that um, sometimes it you would fight it because because of the shape of the wings. Uh, that the wing tips are curved up. It always wanted to right itself, you know, it's quite a stable like uh, platform for putting a camera on, I remember now. And it was just taking me a little bit of time getting used to that then. So there you go, the uh, AXN Clouds Fly Floater Jet from um, Hobby King. Okay then, yeah, it's second of my pusher prop planes. This one I haven't flown for well over a year. Uh, this is the MD Tech. 
been renamed as the Sky Surfer now from Banggood. I think it cost me 40 quid for the kit. And then I put um, my choice of speed controller and motor and prop. So um, it's a 1400 kV uh, brushless outrunner motor. I think I put, if I remember rightly, a 40 amp speed controller runs on a 3S2200 and an 8 by six eight by six prop uh, this has got a pusher prop on it so the prop spins um, the opposite way to most most propellers normally they would spin um, clockwise this one actually spins anti-clockwise but it's got a proper pusher prop on it because one of my subscribers pointed out that the prop was spinning the wrong way and I could run the risk of the prop nut loosening so I looked into that and made sure that it was the correct configuration so uh, as I said, I haven't flown it for a long time, so here we go. A very, very quirky little plane, this one. Very quirky. Um, very, very strange plane. Looks strange, strange to put together. Um, it's not, it's got EPO wing, but um, the rest of the uh, elevator and rudder are made from EPS foam. So quite, quite crash resistant, but uh, quite strange to uh, put together. And it's got a carbon fiber boom, because obviously it's a pod and boom design with the wing. But very, very nice to fly. I always enjoyed flying it. Although I gotta be honest, because it's so quirky, I found that the videos didn't really get views that much. So but there you are. As I said, I'm working my way through my hangar of planes that I haven't flown for a very long time. And this is one of them. I'm just gonna go to a high rate, second. And again, you know, as I said in the uh, flight with the floater jet, because there's such a long time in between flying these, you forget really like what the idiosyncrasies of that plane were. And I couldn't remember with this one where the center of gravity was, so I had to research it and look back over videos I watched when I first built it. I mean, obviously, you know, I've got the settings in my radio because this one was on my DX8 so I knew what roughly what the trim situation was unfortunately with this one when I bought it and built it the EPS foam tail was was bent and I tried everything to get it to straight straighten but uh, I never could but again you know it's a it's a lovely little plane to fly and they do this in an FPV version as well which you know I should imagine has no problem at all with the big 1.4 wingspan carrying the weight of the FPV equipment and a nice big battery possibly as well. You know, for extended flight times. But uh, for me, it was just all about flying it. Not, not being somebody that's uh, into FPV at all. And it's just a nice, relaxing plane to fly. Again, four channel spectrum wireless receiver, the AR420, which I find work very, very well and get fantastic range as well. If I have any problems with these wireless uh, spectrum receivers, when I do a range check, they're always spot on. No holes, nothing at all. So I feel myself getting bit now. It's that time of year again. Again, because they're pusher props, they tend to be a little bit more noisy when you hit that throttle. But then they're also capable of flying very, very nice and relaxed as well. So, I say we've got a little bit of bumpiness up there today. Just let it glide past then. 
So I've cut the power there and she's just gliding up. So you can see the effects of the wind there. I did have a little bit of an issue with the size of the wheels that came with the kit. I changed them for bigger wheels, including the rear wheel as well. And um, over the years, I've had a few issues. For instance, the push rods are external and running plastic tubes. And when you fly on a wet field, the push rod, the metal push rods inside the tubes get rusty and then you lose your or rudder and elevate the control so I'm always taking them out and wiping them clean and getting like the residue off and re-oiling them so uh, you know it does have a little bit of uh, work involved in keeping this one flying nicely the pod is like a strong the red pod is a strong ABS plastic and when I was putting it together I thought oh my god you know this is going to be quite flimsy and weak but it's proved to be Quite resilient, really, and uh, quite quite strong plastic. You know, and it goes quite well. Shifts, so I do enjoy flying it. And I do enjoy flying things that are different. You know, it's quirky. So uh, very very enjoyable. Oh, a bit of a wing straight there, but they're actually down safe. Not bad, because I haven't flown it for over a year. Took me by surprise again. Um, as I said, I didn't really know what to expect, but that, because there's less time involved, just over a year, felt lovely. Um, really, really nice, quirky plane that flies very, very nicely. Definitely one for somebody that's, say, looking at their first four channel plane, progressive from a three channel, it's a trainer, you know, it's nice and forgiving and it flies nice and slow but it's got that little bit of turn of pace and it can do rolls and it can do loop-de-loops as well so uh, yeah um, for me it's a little bit underrated I can tell by the views that the videos got that people weren't really that bothered or interested in in watching the videos about this plane but uh, there you go, I'd really like it so for me and Cheryl Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye. Bye.